Hey there, and welcome to the Future Olympian. My name is Andrea Clow, and I am the owner and trainer here. And today we're going to be taking you through the six steps to building a healthy lifestyle. So as dressage riders or any riders in the horse world, we have very, very busy schedules because we're either working to make the money to afford for a horse or we're riding the horse or taking care of the horse or doing everything in between with our families in the barn and whatever else um, duties that we have, right? <sighs> Horses are alive, everything else is just details. It's kind of my motto that I stick to one, once in a while. My husband doesn't like it. But anyways, I wanna give you six simple steps that you can use in your health and wellness journey so that you can become better in your own riding, feel healthier, feel more on top of it, and just feel incredible, right? Because that's what we all wanna feel. We wanna feel incredible. So these six steps, I start from the very bottom and I work my way up. Um, and I absolutely love these. Like, if you live by these, you can pr live a pretty healthy lifestyle. So the very first thing that we need to consider is sleep. Sleep is vital. <laughs> and I cannot, um, I cannot, like, tell you this enough. Sleep is literally the one thing that I do not mess with. You need your adequate amount of sleep. I don't care if you need a workout in. I don't care if, I don't care. Sleep is the number one thing because sleep helps us regulate stress. It helps us feel energetic. It wakes us up. We need it to rejuvenate. So we need it to build strength. Um, we don't actually build strength protein. Protein is kind of a lie and it plays a role into the strength building. But sleep is more important than protein. So we need to make sure we're getting an adequate amount of sleep and whatever that might be for you. It could be seven hours, it could be eight hours, it could be nine hours. I do the best on eight. Uh, I know that for myself. Like if I don't get eight hours of sleep, I like don't talk to me today. I'm good. <laughs> and uh, so we need to make sure that we're taking the time to get adequate amounts of sleep in our daily routine. Because a lot of us were living such a stressful life, it's gonna cause weight gain. We eat like, I think it's four, 400 more calories a day if we are don't get enough sleep. That is an insane amount of calories to be eating more of because we're stressed out. So why not get the sleep and have to work out less, right? I don't know, I know what I would choose personally. Okay, so the next thing that we need to take a look at is our stress level. So sleep ties into our stress level, but what is our stress level? Are we constantly feeling like we're so stressed out that we can't even function? Yeah, the more stressed out we are, the more we're gonna eat, the more we're gonna feel like crap, the more exhausted we're gonna feel, the more we can't do things because we're exhausted. <laughs> And it all is just this vicious cycle. So we need to learn to control the stress. We need to kind of like shove it back and say, hey, no, you can't take over my life right now or ever. Like, I don't need you. <laughs> you are not going to help me achieve anything. And we become tense. We become really tense, scatterbrained when we're stressed out. So we need to learn to set up a lifestyle, a healthy living lifestyle that is going to be effective for us. And I want to say it's in the membership program that I include a lot of these and I dissect them even more because it's so important that we kind of dissect things down into a very simple, simple way. So creating a plan, a routine in our daily lifestyle, creating a monthly calendar, our goal sheets is going to help reduce that stress. So we need to look at different things that we just want to get out of. Like we're not, it doesn't affect our life. It, doesn't really benefit us in any way. So if you're like helping out with say it's a mom's group or something, you absolutely hate it. You're like, I don't even like the people there. I don't want to talk to them. It's just an added stress. Why are you doing it then? Oh, because someone expects me to. Or they're going to be mad if I quit. Then you're not benefiting you by doing that. You're not benefiting you at all. And it's just an added stress that you don't need in your life. Okay, so take a look at those. Take a step back. Look at what they are. All right, next, it is important to clean up our eating habits. So I'm not saying you have to go on a diet. I'm not saying 
anything about diet at all. In fact, I don't even follow a diet. Um, and I think, I think nutrition restrictions are kind of overrated unless you're doing them for a certain purpose. And I'm not saying lose weight as a purpose. I'm saying that your body reacts to them. Like you don't focus as well. Like when someone eats sugar or red dyes, they're like scatterbrained and all over the place and they just feel exhausted. Right? Or um, we eat, we eat uh, all these foods that are highly processed. And we just feel exhausted when you eat them because we're eating so much junk food. We're eating so much extra um, calories that aren't even nutrition filled that we're putting ourselves even further back. So it's important that we're eating whole meals. We're eating effectively. We're eating correctly. We're eating whole foods. We're eating our proteins. We're getting adequate amount of protein and we're getting adamant adequate amount of carbs and adequate amount of fats and i'm not saying that you cut carbs carbs you <laughs> this frustrates me so much i am not a keto person i will never pretend to be there's a way to do it effectively and if you have certain medical issues where you have to eat keto totally fine but to completely cut carbs out doesn't make any sense because the carbs that we need to be eating are found in our vegetables. They're not found in white breads. They're not found in donuts or cookies or anything else like that. Those are not the carbs we need to be eating. We need to be eating healthy, good carbs for our body because carbs give us energy. Carbs are so freaking important because I'll tell you right now, if I don't eat carbs during the day, I will be the crabbiest person <laughs> you have ever talked to. And I'm sure the same thing can go for anybody else. If they're not eating adequate amount of carbs, then their body is literally has no energy and they're just going to be a royal pain in the butt. Protein. Protein is a meat. Meats. Eat meats. If you're vegetarian, eat food that has protein in it. There's plenty of food out there with protein in it that's healthy. But we need to be making sure we're eating correctly. And then fats. So those tie in there too, like the good healthy fats. So we need to make sure that we're eating correctly. We're eating effectively in this. Now I'm saying like plan your meals out, have family meals with everybody involved. Eat correctly. Don't sit there and eat fast food. Don't sit there and eat pizza all the time and then say, oh, I'm gaining weight. Well, no, duh. <laughs> like, let's look at what we're eating. That pizza is going to be full of white, white breads. It's going to be full of like the stuff on top of the pizza is all right, but there's not a ton of protein. So you're probably gonna be hungry later. So it's just about eating effectively. It's about eating correctly and effectively. If I, if I cut anything out of my diet, it's sugars and processed foods. That's what I'd cut. Anything else, unless it causes you headaches or makes you feel anxious or it gives you some sort of side effect, then don't cut it out. There's no point. Cut it out because it affects your body incorrectly. All right, now we're going on to four. This sort of ties into nutrition, but I think it's an important like step in this. And this is drinking water. I will not tell you how many people I've seen show up to the barn and say, oh, all I've had to drink today is coffee. And then they get cramps. And then they <laughs> feel exhausted. And then they start to get cold. And then they start to say, oh, I feel a little lightheaded because you're dehydrated. Water is the number one energy drink you can drink. It will always give you energy. If you drink the adequate amount of water that you need in your day-to-day -day life, you will get more energy from that and feel better than you will from coffee. I'm going to tell you that right now. And I love coffee to death, but I've had to cut it out. <laughs> I will have it on occasion because I just I will absolutely love coffee. But it is not going to benefit you if that's all you're drinking. If you're drinking drinks that are dehydrating you, like pops, sodas, um, coffee, energy drinks, they're filled with sugar. They're filled with caffeine. They're filled with all these additives that you don't need in your body. So why are you sitting there and doing it? 
is not effective to anyone in any way. So make sure that you're getting at least 60 ounces of water a day, all the way up to 125 ounces. And yeah, in the first few weeks, you might pee a lot. I'm not going to lie to you. But your body eventually gets used to it. It's a way for our body to take out all of the toxins in our body. And it's so good for you. All right. So now we're going into five. So these four steps are the number four steps. If you don't have these down correctly, then don't worry about anything else. Don't worry about working out. Don't worry about adding all these extra silly things in there. So number five is our physical fitness. Because as riders, we are physically fit. Like we need to be for our horses. So what I just tell, if you're just starting a fitness regimen, if you're just starting to work out again, pick three days, 30 minutes. Do what you want, do what you want to do in those 30 minutes to begin with. Because a lot of times as women, we forget to take time for ourselves. So if we're teaching our bodies that this specific time, every day, every week, is my time, then we're going to find energy in that. Okay? I don't care if you go for a walk. I don't care if you do a short yoga video. I don't care what you do. I don't care if you lay on the couch and meditate or take a bath. That is you time. You need to listen to your body and what it needs in that time. And eventually you can slowly work up and say, hey, I'm going to walk today. Hey, I'm going to do a yoga routine today. Hey, I'm going to do a strength training today. And all of a sudden, you're already getting there. You're already halfway there. You're feeling stronger. You're feeling better. You're feeling so much more healthier and less stressed in your body. Okay? So now we're going to come on to this last step. And that is is take the time to do what makes you happy. Take time to do what you what you do, what you love to make you happy. Horses are your happy place. Maybe riding your bike is your happy place. Maybe um, playing with your dog or your kids is your happy place. Take time for you or reading a book. Do things that you love to do because this is where our energy comes from in an awake state. And if you can incorporate all of these steps into your lifestyle, you're going to feel so much better, so much more active, so much just amazing in yourself because you are putting yourself first. So these are my six steps, oh, <laughs> six steps to living a healthy lifestyle. If you want to find out more, if you want to see more of how this works, the membership is probably going to be the best tool for you in this space. If you're just looking for fitness, the 12 weeks riding to fitness program is the best for you. Or if you just want a simple start, check out the subscription. It's super easy. All right, guys, I hope you love this video. If you do, hit like below. If you want to see more like this, hit subscribe. And if you want to, I don't know, if you want to dance, dance. <laughs> I don't know what I was going to say. So hit like, hit subscribe, and we will see you all next time.